endeleo tunamshukuru Mungu uh, tumekuwa tukienda hapa na pale eh, sio kutanga tanga tumekuwa tukienda huduma <laughs> tulienda pale Kitui ikawa poa sana watu wa Kitui unasikia ni wachache hapo tulienda stadium kwa sababu tungeatosha kanisa lolote pale tukatangaza msimamo na tukabariki watu wa Mungu na tukawa introducea bishop wao ambaye ni bishop Chala. Tulipotoka pale ilikuwa ni mande tukaenda Machakos pande za Sofia. Kuna kanisa letu pale liko na chuo kikubwa kinaitwa Baraka. Kinafundisha watoto ambao wamemaliza darasa la nane vitu vya ufundi na wamefundisha watu 1400 hadi sasa na 80% of them wamepata kazi za kujiajiri, only 20% wameajiriwa na ikawa nayo ni pale pazuri sana tuka introduce bishop wao anaitwa Mbidhi. Tukatoka mahali pale tukaenda Makueni, tukaenda mwisho wa njia. Wale watu wanatoka Makueni. Pale paliitwa zamani Evinganzia kwa sababu njia ilikuwa inaishia pale na bishop wetu alikuja akatangaza njia haiwezi ishia pale itaanza pale. Na hiyo prophecy yake ilifanya kazi. Atunge atoshea kanisa, tulikuwa nje na hema kadhaa tukawa announce their bishops wana bishop wawili bishop uh, Jackson Mwema na bishop um, Makao Nzui bwana asifiwe tukatoka hapo tukakuja na Robi South tukaenda Ngong Ngong walitangaziwa mambo prophetically mengi kwa sababu ndege yote inao kanyanga Kenya lazima ione mlima wa Ngong ikiona mlima wa Ngong ndio inapewa direction ya Kuland hapo tukasema nao watakuwa wakipeana direction za watu kuland bwana asifiwe tuka introduce maaskofu wao wa maaskofu wanne kuna askofu anaitwa Samuel Gakuo uh, Peter Njoga Joyfriend Njoguna na ofisia wao anayeitwa James Ndiva tukatoka pale tukakuja kanisa la Nairobi North Deliverance Church na Love North na watu wengi walitoka kanisa kwangu hata nilisikia raha sana tena nilipoambia wasimame walikuwa wengi kuliko region yoyote sisi tulikuwa wengi kutoka kanisa moja na asante sana walipakwa mafuta tena kwa wingi na wengine wakakatalia mstari wangu nikafanya biashara mzuri nikipaka watu wangu mafuta bwana asifiwe tuka introduce mabishop wao wawili mmoja anaitwa Mohamed Ole Kamwaro wa kutoka Kitengela na askofu wetu wa region region of Asia Robert uh, Dhimba sasa tunaelekea upande wa Meru tunaenda Nkubo kutoka Nkubo tutaenda Nyeri kutoka Nyeri tutakwenda Muranga kutoka Muranga tunaenda ya Nakuru kutoka Nakuru tunaenda Kericho kutoka Kericho tutaenda Bomet kutoka Bomet tunaenda Kisi kutoka Kisi tutaenda Kisumu kutoka Kisumu tunaenda Eldoret alafu tunarudi kutoka pale tutaenda Mombasa na kutoka Mombasa mwaka huu tutaenda Tanzania Dar es Salaam tarehe 31 kuombea makanisa yetu ya Tanzania. Tunaomba maombi yenu hiyo kazi sio kidogo. Wale ambao tulikuwa nao na Robin North waliona kwa kidogo tu kwamba inamchosha hata askofu kwamba wakati wa kubariki wachungaji inambidi kukaa chini na naona watu wengine wanasema ni dini mpya kwa sababu mtu kama ameketi chini unataka kuwekea mkono lazima upige magoti. Na si kuwa mpaka wakati mwingine anasimama kwa sababu anaona dini watu wanapinga hiyo dini. Hiyo si dini ni kuchoka. Huyo jamaa anachoka kweli. Na unajua kazi ya kubariki wachungaji wake hatuwezi msaidia. Yeye ndiye amepewa hicho kibali, majira haya ni yake. Kwa hivyo muweze kumuombea na kuombea apostolic team tunaposafiri pamoja naye uh, ili Bwana atubariki, tuweze kukubalika popote tuendako. Na nashukuru Mungu nimeweza kwenda hizo uh, tano naomba bwana anisaidie kwenda zingine nikiweza kwenda zote bwana asifiwe zile nitaweza hiyo haikuwa lazima inakuwa ni kwa hiari ya apostolic team ambao wanaweza kwenda bwana asifiwe mwaka huu ni mwaka wa bingu lililo wazi bingu lililo wazi mwambie jirani yako bingu lililo wazi na actually sio bingu moja ni bingu zilizo wazi kwa sababu ni bingu nyingi Bwana asifiwe. Na tunapoendelea ndipo unapata maufunuo nyingi. Unapata kujua kwamba kuna bingu ya tatu na hiyo ni bingu bingu. 
ile bingu ya tatu ambapo Paulo alisema kuna mtu niliyeona sijui ni kwa mwili ama kwa roho kwa, kwa, kwa roho lakini alinyakuliwa akaenda bingu ya tatu bingu ya tatu palipo na mamlaka palipo mambo mema kuna bingu hii ambayo tumekati chini hapa hii ni bingu pia hapa ni bingu bwana Yesu apewe sifa na kuna bingu ya pili ambayo lazima tuombe bingu ya tatu inapowachilia kitu bingu ya pili isizuie katika jina la Yesu kwa sababu bingu ya pili ndipo maombi ya Danieli yalizuriwa kwa siku ishirini na moja. bwana Yesu apewe sifa mpaka malaika Gabrieli akakuja Mikaeli akakuja kupigana vita ili Gabrieli aweze kupeleka uh, message ambayo ilikuwa ya Danieli kwa hivyo kuna bingu na hizo zote bingu zifunguliwe hii ya hapa duniani iwe wazi kwako hiyo nyingine iwe wazi na ya tatu iwe wazi pia bingu ziweze kufunguliwa kwetu bwana Yesu apewe sifa na katika uh, mwaka huu wa bingu ambayo iko wazi oh nilitupa kitu asante karibu ni kanyange mwenyewe na ni mahali yangu sio ni hasara Leo ningependa kurudi mahali ambapo niliwaambia tulisimamia kidogo tulikuwa tumeanza kuzungumza kuhusu nguvu za Mungu uh, the power of the word of God because God's word has power tell your neighbor God's word has power God's word has power when you use God's word there is power power to heal power to deliver power to set free no wonder Jesus comes to the grave where they had laid Lazarus for four days And what does he do? He speaks the word. He says, "Lazarus, come forth." And Lazarus came forth though he was wrapped, he was free. Indeed, the word of God has power. The word of God has power. The word of God has power. I'm not a scientist. I don't claim to be one, though uh, though I went through school. But I know some guys that were scientists even when we were in school. They would prove things, you know, and so on. But me, technically, to technify things technically. Scientists are very curious people. If you sit with a scientist even here in this church, you will know. They are curious. They always want to know what makes this thing to tick. What causes things to work. And, but they have, as they have looked farther and farther using their microscopes or microscopic world they have discovered some mystery but they don't want to call it the power of the word of god they call it mystery they are wonderful people because they don't want to honor god as he is but as scientists who is born again we can talk about god virtually in every area whether it is in medicine uh, wherever in agriculture because the word of god is everywhere actually i'm reading the the book of leviticus now and i i thought before the doctors were there were some other doctors that were priests because they were told what to look if someone has something white before they condemn you they had to put you out somewhere to assess whether it was leprosy and if you are unclean they had medicine for it so when you talk about medicine then we can go back to the bible and find that medicine started there even medicine to make water clean and pure to purify water it never started in our age to make the kind of water uh, drinkable it is started in the bible so when they do their work with microscopic uh, uh, precision they have discovered a mystery they have discovered that there are things that they are called atoms si hata unaamini kuna atoms hata kama uionagi The, I also believe there are atoms. But they also tell us in an atom that ka think and it atom ka kuna kitu kinaitwa nucleus. And that nucleus ha, in of every atom except hydrogen has two more protons, two or three, two or more protons and that the protons has a positive charge. So what happens when you get two or more things together that have a positive charge? they push each other this way and that way or if you like they repel each other so then the scientists are asking why doesn't the nucleus of an atom fly apart since 
the protons should repel each other. So scientists, wise people, have decided then that there is a mysterious, powerful force holding together. And they call it the strong force. But we come to tell the scientists that although they call it the strong force, it is very interesting because we find it in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his son and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 1 verse 3. The word upholding means sustaining, maintaining. So what is this strong force that holds atoms together? It is the word of God. It is the word of his power. So what would happen if the word of God is not there? Then this world will crumble. It will melt. In actual fact, 2 Peter 3, 11 to 12 says, Therefore, since all things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? He's asking, looking for and hasting the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, because which of heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with velvet heat. In other words, what is holding the world is the word of God. Once the word will be taken out of this world, there will be chaos. So whatever is holding us is not America. It's not Russia. They have tried, but they cannot. The word is held by the word of God. The powerful word of God. Tell your neighbor the powerful word of God. We bless the name of the Lord. So we have this powerful word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Obviously, the writer of Hebrews was talking about Genesis chapter 1 when nine times the Bible says, and this is God who was speaking, he says, and God spoke, and God spoke, and it came to pass. So that is the mystery of the power of God's word. It holds together. It brings it together. We are held by the word of God. We are held by what God has spoken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So far, we did look at the power we have in the name of Jesus. We also looked at the, 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 the power we get from the blood of Jesus. We also looked at the power we get from praise. When we praise, and that is where we got the slogan, praise the Lord, and everybody would say, for his masses endureth forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And today we are looking for the word of God, because the word of God has power. If God's word has so much power, then what does it have to do with us? What can it do to us? The power of God. Number one, God's word has the power to transform. My brother, my sister, if the word of God has not transformed you, maybe you have not done what I'm going to help you understand. Because the word of God has and will transform you. Somebody, somebody made a comment around the 80s of this man that he used to sell Makkah somewhere in town. And you know, what one knows a Makkah and a Kwaga and a Fanana and a Makkah? Quill. Sunday, Sunday. Because Abu Ako and a Makkah, Akijipanguza ni Makkah, Vumbi ni Makkah, Atam Uusuake ni Makkah. Ole Wako kama we ni Mwupe kama Mimi and Bau knows a Makkah. Alafu. Is, uh, hijakava everywhere, unakuwa na maspot ya maka. But the testimony he was giving was this. That man, every, he would finish work in Nairobi and go home, and going back to Kangema, he did not, he, he, he wasn't clean at all. He, he was makaish. But then one day he gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And from that point on, although he was selling maka, he changed. You don't have to be Makaish because you're in the Makkah. 
you can decide I'm not going to be made makai. I'm going to be transformed by the word of God and my life will be different. So he changed completely. He would buy Makkah to a clean person. And I know you can do it. Makkah does not have to transform you because if the word of God comes to you, it transformed you. Amen. The word of God has the power to transform. May God transform us by his word. For us, thank God for, for, for many of us. Me, I was born in the city. Not the city of Nairobi. Birmingham City. Birmingham. Look at each other say, Bishop Puerto is a liar, Birmingham. <laughs> when I did CPE, there was a question which was asking, which is the Birmingham of Kenya? Do you know which was Birmingham? Which one? It's only because you know I was born in Thika. <laughs> yes, I was born in Thika. Thika was the Birmingham. Why? Because industries, there were so many industries in the 60s and early 70s. They were all being taken there because of the river, the two rivers that pour water there. So me, the milk that I started taking was milk ya karatasi. So me na jua KCC, sana. But you know good milk. Githa, you know good milk. But the story is told of a woman that has refused to take milk. And the reason why she doesn't take milk is because she discovered the milk she was taking was not real milk. But she discovered later, after she had refused taking milk for 12 years, she thought the milk was mango flavored. And the reason is because where she came from, they had a cow. The neighbor had mangoes. And apart from Kibuda Kibwana, who is working very hard to make sure there will be no mango rotting in Makueni, is making a place to, uh, to process. Many mangoes go to Meru, go to town, they will be stinging because there are so many. People will be told to buy as many as you can. Unambio beba, unataka gapi. Beba, 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 beba. Because they rot. So the neighbor had mangoes. And the trees had overgrown and gotten to their site. The cow, at a certain season, liked only to go to that site because it liked eating the mangoes. And the more the mangoes the cow ate, the milk tasted mangoish. So it was flavored with mango. She hated, she hated milk because it was tasting mangoish. Now, for some of us in Nairobi, when the farmer have no good grass, what do they do for us? They go to Kenya breweries. They go to Del Monte in Thika. For Kenya breweries, what do they take? Ah, ndiyo, umelewa, machicha hiyo. Imekamuliwa pombe, iuzue watu wanakunywa pombe, na watu wakunywa maziwa wauzue pombe ambao siwa pombe kabisa. Itakuwa imesaidiwa na ngombe, ikuwe maziwa. Na hiyo maziwa ya machicha inaonjaka kitu ingine. Hata ukiweka na mnagani, unasikia kakitu kana, kana haribu maziwa. Na kuna watu wameanza kuchukia maziwa. Kwa sababu inanuka mananasi. Unasikia ni kama mananasi, ni kama flavor ya, ma, ya mananasi. But if you want to know, ask the cow. And the cow will tell you that what you take inside affects what you give outside. True or true? So what you take inside will be seen in the outside because it will take and produce and your production will be affected. But the word of God when you take in then it should transform us for better. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The word of God should trans uh, tr transform us for better. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In 2 Peter 1 and verse number 4 by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature. Divine nature. For us to have the divine nature, it is partaking of the promises of his word that makes us like Jesus. You want to be like Jesus. Don't pray anymore. Take the word of God in you. 
And the more you take of God's word, the more you become like Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It changes us from the inside. It transforms us. In 1945, American troops, when they were landing in Okinawa, they found a, ti a tiny village called Shimabuku. When I saw this, when I was preparing, I thought this, this was almost like uh, Shima, Shima Hoho, you know, uh, where Kakamega, you know, they have Shim, Shim, uh, Uko Twingi. 30 years previously, so it was 1915, a missionary on his way to Japan had landed there and it took a little while there, a couple of years, and he had two converts, two Japanese converts, who he gave the Japanese Bible, taught them a few hymns, and gave them a Japanese Bible, and encouraged them to live by it. That village, is a small village, took the Ten Commandments. They became their legal court. They were judged by the Ten Commandments. They took the Sermon on the Mount and they made it their social conduct. They made their Bible, they made literature in school. So in school, they did the Bible. This result was that for years, they had no jail in that village. No jail in that village. There was no brothel in that village. There was no drunkenness in that village. There was no divorce in that village. In that village, they had a high level of good health, high level of happiness. What had happened? The word of God transformed them. May God word also transform you and transform me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2 and 2, as newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So the second thing that I also believe the word of God does, it brings faith. If you want God to do anything for you, let the word of God come upon you. Receive the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's how faith comes. Faith will come to us when we hear. So there are two things in this verse that are critical. Number one is God's word. But God's word is good. But for it, you have to hear it. And to hear it is important. The more you hear it, the more transformational uh, it brings to you. You get transformed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus echoes the same, he says, this in Matthew uh, eleven fifteen, 15. To him who has ears, let him hear. Let him hear. If you have ears, let him hear. To have ears to hear means that we must have hearts that are soft and palatable and teachable. Willing to hear what God wants to say to us. Not just what he wants, what you and I want to hear, but what God wants us to hear. This is the kind of hearing that becomes rich in faith when we hear God's word. God's word brings transformation. When we hear it, it brings transformation. So it's good to keep on speaking the word of God to one another. The word of God to one another. Encourage each other with the word of God. Thirdly, God's word has the power to heal. Now this is important for us. Psalms 107, 19 and 20, the Bible says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distress. Verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. The word of God. We can send it. We can speak it. And the word of God brings deliverance. You know in our travel. What the, uh, there is a word that I picked. And I think it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday. That you know. Some of us. Would be scared. By a witch. Who will bring to you a dead cockroach. Or a dead frog. Or a dead snake. If he's courageous enough, why can't he bring a live cobra? So he's also a coward. He wants to bring a dead one to scare you. So one bishop tells us that one time he's coming from church, his family and children, 
Watoto wake walikuwa si watoto sita ama watano. So kwa geta akakuta watu wamejazana. Wengi wanaangalia ndege ambayo amefariki amewekwa pale kwa mlango. Na wanaangalia waone what will happen. Sasa alipokuja akaona ndege akampiga teke mzuri sana. Akapiga yeye akaenda huko. Watu wote wakatoroka. Alafu wakaangalia waone akianguka. Don't be scared by some of these things. You have power with you speak the word of God that there is no weapon that is formed against me that is going to prosper. Speak the word, learn to speak the word, learn to speak the word of God and it will give you deliverance. The word of God. You see one time we were coming from uh some place from Kiligoris and we are coming to Keroka so that we can go down to Kisi and we are coming with a pigeon 404 I know some of you don't know there were pigeon called 404 they were may pigeon come back najua hiyo gari ilikuwa poa sana ilikuwa na moja pigeon 504 kwa hivyo 404 kigari kizuri sana when we arrived in Kiroka, if you know where Kiroka is, Gari Kaonyesha, empty, kwa pipa. We told the driver, we are going to Kisi High School. They were waiting for us. It was a morning on a Sunday. And we wanted to get there and get back to Kilgoris for crusades. We told the driver, the only word of which can stop you is when God tells you to stop you. If he doesn't, don't look at this thing. It could be enough. This E could mean enough. So why don't we take enough instead of empty? You are hearing what I'm saying because sometimes when we hear a word, we are the one who decide what it means, isn't it? Some of us decide the negative. I don't know why. Why can't we decide the positive? So we declared it is more than enough. The driver drove. You know, Kiroka to Kisi is about 40 kilometers, 40 some kilometers. Every corner, the driver wanted the car to stop. And every corner, the car did not stop. We went and landed. Now, if you know where Kisi High School is, there is a small slope. So we, we got there to Kisi. We entered Kisi. But where we parked, the car could not move again. Because we never told God we want to go to Kisi town. We wanted to go to Kisi high school. So when we landed, we had to go with Ajerikan after, but it was after the meeting. I'm saying, remember God's word. It does not only have transformation or power, use it. But you have to use it the way it is. Believe what God says you can do, then do it in the name of the Lord. Because the word of God has power. The word of God has power to heal. To heal. Jesus in Matthew 8, 5 to 13, he used a centurion servant. But this is how he healed the centurion servant. The centurion himself says, me, I'm a man of authority. I say one, come, he comes. I tell another one, go. So he was telling Jesus, me, I use my words. When I say go, they go. When I say come, they come. Now you, you are a God's son. Why don't you send the word? Say healing to my servant and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, your servant is healed. And the Bible records immediately, people came to tell him, I'm a sharp owner. What time the centurion discovered it was the time when Jesus spoke. May the Lord speak in your situation. Because when he speaks in your situation, there will be healing. There will be order. There will be restoration. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God's word gives us power to fight the enemy. That's the fourth point. Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He's telling us we are going for war. What we need is the helmet of salvation. Are you born again? If you are born again enough, take the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Now march and you're going to be victorious. But all unto you, brother, you have salvation, you are saved and born again. 
and you are looking for the sword, but you have not carried it. It is not in your spirit. When you pull, you can't get it. But have the sword of the spirit. So the spirit can use that sword to fight the devil. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the devil hates people that have the sword. If people don't have the word of God in their hearts, they are leaving the Holy Spirit without a weapon. The spirit wants to fight battles for you. If there are battles that you are losing, it's because you are not giving the spirit of God the word, which is the sword that he can use to fight the battles for you. It is true because God's word is the sword of the spirit. You know, Jesus defeated the devil. He told him it is written, the devil gave up. And I have told you of this story, of this lady that was being chased by a huge man that wanted to rape her. And this girl turns around and said, Jesus! And the guy falls down. He did it three times. And every time he would wake up thinking, Use the word of God, believe it, and it will bring deliverance to you in the name of the Lord. In the 50s, during the Mau Mau era, Mau Mau did not like church at all. Because church refused for all things. They refused for, for circumcision of girls. They, they fought against so many things in the 50s, not in the 60s. You know, some people are fighting for it now. But Christians, born again, loving God, fought with it even in the 50s. So there was this, 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 uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this, this, this old lady that was living well and she was wealthy. And there were people that planned to steal. They wanted to steal in her house. And every day they would go to steal. They would leave. There is no war. There is no war. They see here, tunaingia. Naka kamama, tunakastua, tutunachukua mali. But every night they came, they found a big war. They could not see the end. And a big gate, they would not see the end. But in the morning, they are it. So one day in the morning, they visited the lady. They say, where mama? What is going on? Every night we come, we see a big wall. Kwani unajengaga ukuta usiku na asubu unabomoa? What? Na iyo mawe unaperekaga wapi? She said, what? Me, I don't know. The only thing I know. Every night I go to sleep, I pick the word of God, speak it around my compound, speak it, and declare that the angel of the Lord are guarding me, and I'm secure in him, and there is an edge around me. So they said, now that is the prayer that you pray. Don't pray it tonight. And the lady says, no, I pray it all the time. May the Lord help you to use the word of God, because the word of God has power. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How can we access this power then? Number one, we have to do what the Bible says. When the Bible says something, believe it. 2 Kings 5, verse 1 to 14 is a story that we know of Naaman. Naaman goes, goes to, 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 to Israel and he wants, him, he wants to be healed. He is seeking for healing. But there are three things that I think that are important, that you can, principles that you can learn from that story. Number one, God does not always use the most important people. Because for Naaman, he used what? A house help. Don't misuse your house girl. You could be holding a miracle that can deliver you. And there are some that have actually delivered us, helped our children, and helped us. They're important people. God can use anyone. God can use even a donkey. God can use anything. God can use, God can use anybody. He doesn't have to be an important person. He will use, because Naaman comes and he thinks the servant of God will come out and salute him and tell him, there is a high table prepared for generals like you. No, he never even bothered to know who it is. He only told him, now tell him, go to Jordan, dip yourself in seven times, and after you have dipped yourself seven times, you will be whole. And you know what the second principle I find in this scripture is this. Pride. Tell your neighbor pride. It can rob you God's blessing. Pride can. Because this man says, I'm a general. How come he never came out? I thought he would lay hands on me. I thought he would say a few things and things would be okay. But he tells me to go and dip myself in the river. Kwani hiyo mito ya kwao. Iyo ya jorodani. Dio mzuri kurioko ya kwetu. Yetu ni mzuri na ni kubwa na ni pana. Siendi. You know God uses anybody. He is servant ya namuambia. Wewe. Kama ungiambia utue mali. Si ungetoa. Eh, ningetoa. 
Si hata umebeba vitu eh nimebeba. Amekuambia utoe kitu hata gharama hakuna. Ni kujitumbukiza tu kwa maji. Wewe enda ujitumbukize bwana. Boss na kuomba boss. Enda ujitumbukize tu. And that man helps. So anybody can help us not very necessary important person. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That principle that I find here is that obedience produces blessing. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. That I want to focus right now is that when and why we receive the things we receive from God is because we follow his instructions. Follow the instruction of God. Naman, I've given you my instruction. I've told you what to do. I've told you what will happen when you have done it. It is up to you. If you do it, something is going to happen. If you don't, nothing will happen. And all of us have instruction. And all the instruction are here. We have been given instruction on what to do. I pray that we are going to use the instruction very well. But James says this in James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetting for hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If, if today I tell you I have a mirror here, a mirror, and if you come to this mirror, all what you need to do is to tell the mirror what you want. So you come, you smile to the mirror, you tell mirror, mirror, Mercedes. And fungwe nangoka pap. Mira, nyumba, ya bedroom tano. And fungwe nangoka pap. And then I tell you, this mirror, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just selling it for only 100,000 shillings. Si mtaumia mkija kuchukua. Kwa sabi nani ataki muujiza, unaotendeka bila kufanya kazi. And you know, I'm saying this, hiyo ndiyo temptation ni metufumua watu wengi. Kwanza hita neti metunyonga. Na inaambiaga mtu, usiambie mtu, isiri yako. Sidi inakuambiaga, don't tell anybody. So one of my relatives, anambiwa na mtu. Tuwe tumeona ni mtu mpoa sana, mtu mzuri, mtu wa mungu. Tunataka kukuletea mali ambayo itakustua. Utajenga shule kubwa uo kusaidia watoto huko kitale. Anakuwa. Kitale is the daughter of my 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 brother. He's firstborn. Aitwa Nyambura. Ameolewa kule hata ni MCA huko. Na ako na watoto wazima anaita kwa kuka. Kwa hivyo huko ninaweza aitwa favari yake. Mezeka. So one day he, he calls me, he tells me I'm coming, I'm picking another car to go back, but there is also another transaction that I'm getting into. Very good transaction. And I'll come and tell you. So he came and told me a very good story. Have you ever been told a very good story? Until you are smiling inside and thinking what you're going to do with the money. You have even gone to where the money is and it is a lot. Hata umehama kule unaishi zima, unaishi mudhaiga, sasa umehama. Hata unashindwa, hii gari itakuja lidi. Hata unaza kuambia watu, mimi na jitaharisha pale nitapake gari and so on and so forth. Those things, ukisikia kitu inasisumua mwili. Think twice. Think twice. So anyway, my daughter comes and he tells me all this deal and plan and so on. And then, at that point when they finish, they mention the connection. There is a colonel from the American army. He is working in Jordan. You know. And uh, he has a lot of money they want to give and he has a contact person from Sudan. That Sudan person will meet you and so on. So I told her, give me the name of the colonel. Did you know I, I'm also known in the American Army? Some of you don't know. So when I got the information, I called a parent who happened to be a member here one time in the U.S. whose son is a senior sergeant manager in the American Army in Florida. So that he can tell me a colonel. Colonel, unajua si 
si private. Kono hata wa Kenya wanajulikana sio wengi. So when I gave the name they looked for all the colonels they have all over the world, that name was not there. So I told my daughter, that's number one, they are not there. Number two, tell me what happened. Those people wanted to trick her, they would have even stolen her car, the car that she was driving on. What I'm saying is this, mirror, if they tell you there is a mirror for money, please don't believe it. Sasa hoja ni kanyange mahali ambapo naona hapa wakuna watu wa Siju kama mutakuja eh, kanisa. Hata iyo kanyakanya. Iyo kanyakanya. Iyo, iyo, iyo kanyakanya. Iyo. Usitupe mbao. Iyo, 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 iyo. Iyo tu. Sitae kuuliza ni wangapi wa mekanyakanya. Ni wangapi mbao mbao. Sitae kuuliza. But you see the temptation is so high. Mbao tu. Mbao tu. You know there are people that are so clever in this country. One man came to this church a clever man called James Mwangi. He is the CEO of Equity. He stood here and he told us that he himself does not go for big money. He goes for small monies. Actually, he told us, I go for 30, 30 shillings. But I go for volumes. So he 20 bao bao, they go for volumes because many people will go for bao 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 bao, kambani bao, Muranga mbao, hapa mbao, nyinyi nyote mbao mbao. Unajua ni mbao ngapi hizo zote? Hata hiyo mbao ulifanya mbao hiyo yako. Hizo mbao. So he made a mathematics here. Katuambia, now, do this mathematics. All my ATMs, 30 shillings, a million people. One day. Tukafanya hesabu. He, umeifanya? Bas, times 30. Umeifanya? Akasema yeye shida ya recurrent, nini mishara ya watu wake, that a bob. Now, Nambiwa, was it too pembao? Hakuna Yesu kwa hii dunia Yesu alikuwa mmoja tu wakupeana. Hawe ngine, we give the volume, mtu mmoja anashinda. Mmoja tu anashinda. Na akishinda, ashindi kira wiki. Si wangalia utaona yule wambao wana muonyesha sasa di alikuwa wa December. Usitupe mbao. They are wise people. Na hiyo, hayongozo na watu chwara chwara. Inaongozo na viongozi wetu. Ndiyo wanatufilisi. Wana you chunguza. Chunguza who are the owners behind those. Iyo mbao mbao. Ndiyo kwamba, watu, <laughs> ebu ni kuambia hii na utaona kweli ni ya kweli. Wale watu ambao wanazianza kwa estit, au ndiyo chwara chwara. Na zao zinashikagwa, zinachomwa. Hata juzi wale shika isidi, waka, lakini yambao, uchomi, eh, hey, uchomi. Hey. So, mira, mira, why do we want things quickly? We don't want the work that is involved. Follow the instruction and there will be a miracle for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And how do I do it? I read God's word. I read God's word. In other words, read the instruction. Read the instruction. Suppose I'm feeling unwell. I'm sick. I have a chest pain, sore throat, and I'm coughing. Then I go, I see a doctor. One of the doctors, right? And the doctor gives me some medicine. And he tells me, now this, you take it in the morning, at lunchtime, and in the evening for five days. When I go home, every, every morning, I take it, and I hold it, and I put it down. Lunch hour, I come, I take it. See, see Nasema, take it. I take it, I hold it, I put it down. So after one week, the guy, I'm not healed, so what do I do? Go back to the doctor. Very serious. Wait, Dr. Muongo, you told me to take it and I've been taking it. And the doctor looks at the medicine. He says, I have not even opened. He tells me, read the instruction. The instruction was, you take, you take this way, you take. You take a spoon like this. You take, you take like this. Follow the instruction. The problem of many of us, we don't want to follow the instruction, but we want the miracle. The word of God will work for us, but let us follow the instruction. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. The instruction. We have Christians that eat daily. But they have no time to get into the word of God. We have Christians that read the newspapers every day. But not the Bible. We have people. They have time for themselves. They glue themselves to the TV set. But no time for the scripture. What does all this say to us? Then there are no miracles. We are looking for people who can do it and pass it to us. No wonder cults are so many. But I tell you what, read the Bible yourself, follow the instruction yourself, and God is going to make you word-like, Christ-like, you'll become because of what you're getting into you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God is so good. Each word that God gives us, let's look at the instruction that he has for us, because then that word is going to work and give us an increase. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many of us would like to prosper? You want to have success. Prosper. Sindio tunambiwa mbao tunakimbia kwa sawa ni prosperity. Ama. Sasa mtu wakija kwambia tu you have been picked by the lottery. Ati namba yako imekuwa picked. Wewe ni mshindi. Alafu unaanza kuambia watu nimeshinda namba yangu imechukuliwa na hujacheza mchezo. Tuna hata inaweza kuwa. But that's what people are, you know. They told me they have picked me. How do they pick you if you have not been involved? At nimeshinda. Nini na hujacheza? Inachezwa America na hujacheza na umeshinda. Hao watu wanajua shida yetu tunataka kuwa successful na tunataka kuwa prosperous. Sio. But in the Bible when God was taking the children of Israel, he wanted to take them over to Jordan to prosper and success. He told them the key to success. He told them in Joshua 1 and verse number 8. Joshua 1 and number 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then you make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. So meditating in God's words is the single most important key to a successful and prosperous life as the Bible defines success and prosperity. Take the word of God in you, soak it, confess it, sing about it. Go, go with the word of God. Talk about it, sing about it, meditate upon it. In night, even in the middle of the night, let the word of God be real to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let God's word meditate upon it. And finally, let God's word speak to you. You know God speaks. If you regularly read and meditate on God's word, it will speak to you. Proverbs 6, 20 to 23. My son, keep your father's command. Do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. When you awake, they will speak with you. For the commandment is a lamp, a lamp and a, li a, a, a law of light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let God speak to us. If you want God's word to speak to you, you have got to make it a high priority in your life. And God's word will speak to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said in the first service, this quick fix of a mirror is like somebody holding the Bible and quoting, it is written. It is written. You have to quote it where? Like Jesus did. Even if you stepped on the Bible at the promise, I mean, akanyanga hadizabwana, zipi. Utakanyanga Bible utaipasua bure. Lakini chukua hadi ya bwana weka chini wikanyanga yu hadi useme, I'm standing on the promises of who? Of God. You know, I, I, I know, and it is true, the word of God has power. But you see, I know someone who used the Bible to hit somebody who was coming to kill him. But he told him what the word of God says, and then hit him with it. So it is not just hitting mikono na Bible. Watakunyanganya, wakufunge mikono na migu. You have to know the word of God so that you, even if they took it away, you have it in your heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So speak, meditate upon the word of God, then you'll be prosperous. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let God speak to you, even in a meeting like this. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your word has power, but it is only the word that we have meditated upon, the instruction that we have followed to the letter, then that word becomes powerful. The word we know can heal. The word gives us faith. The word of God can straighten us. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Lord God, help us to appropriate the word of God so that in the battles that are set before us, there will be victory on our side. When every eye is closed and every head is bowed and you are in our service today, 2019, and this is 13th of January, 2019. And you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you want to give him your heart today. You are there, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Would you lift up your hand and somebody will spot you quickly and bring you here so that I can pray with you in the name of Jesus. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus. You are saying, I want to give my life to Jesus today. I want the Lord to come and save me. I want my life to change completely from today. You are saying, this is me and I'm here. I want the Lord to come and save me. There is a sister coming from this side. Do you want to join her? Do you want to join her in giving your life to Jesus? Do you want to join her in giving your life to Jesus? Just stand up and come to the front. We'll pray for you right now as we bring the service to a close. Even up there, there are people, they are looking, they are watching. If you lift up your hand, somebody will come and will pray with you in the name of the Lord. Pastor Beatrice, would you pray for that sister there? Is there somebody else you want to give your life to Jesus? There is a sister coming also. She wants to give her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus? You want to say this year, my life will have a difference. I'm seeking the Lord. I want to give my life to Jesus. Are you there? Do you want to come? Do you want to come? We want to give you a moment to come. Maybe you have been saved before and you fell back. And you are saying, Bishop, why don't you call me? I also want to rededicate my life to Jesus. If you are there, you are saying, I'm born again, but I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. 2019, you know yourself, it has not been well, but you want to recommit yourself to Jesus. Would you lift up your hand or come? And somebody will also pray for you as you recommit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. In this year of open heaven, that the Lord will lead you and guide you and bring you peace in your life and your family. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we want to thank you for our service this morning. We pray that God, we are going to use your word. Help us to read it, meditate upon it, and speak it for. Because any word that we have meditated, we need to speak it for. Because we need to practice the speaking of the word of God. We honor you and we give you thanks. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you.